Sonny? Sonny. Um, yeah, interesting. Very, <laughs> very, very interesting. <laughs> Is this a int- Should I press further or should I just move, move on? Um, you can press all you want. I'm staying with very, very, very interesting. <laughs> I love Sonny to death. I love Tammy. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I know. I'd look, I, I, would, I would actually like to interview her. I doubt she'd want to talk to me, though. Sonny. Yeah. Sonny. <laughs> she was a wild one, mate. <laughs> she was a wild <laughs> one. <laughs> God bless Chris, man. I mean, I used to feel bad for him, but um, yeah. I remember one time in Europe, uh, I don't know, she was a prima donna, yada, yada, yada. And she was, you know, she was a wild one around the locker room, that's for sure. But, um, she was always a good girl to me. She was always very nice and stuff, you know. But I remember seeing um we got on a tour bus and we used to get on the um on the buses after a show. And he used to have meals at catering, which catering was fantastic in Europe. So we and we'd have boxes and it'd be listed like beef stew, this, that, that. You know, they'd even have banoffee pie to go for us or something else. And they'd have chicken in this to go. So I remember she got beef stew with so many shit in that beef stew. <laughs> And she started eating it up in the front of the bus, and all I hear her scream, like, ah, and I'm like, what the hell happened up there? And then the word trickled back, oh, somebody shit in her beef stew, man. And she was eating quite a bit of it, man. Oh. So, it was, yeah, she had some heat back then. <laughs> mm. Mm. You'd have to, who was the, uh, who was the uh, depositor or the uh, donor? Do you know? I don't know. We still know. We still don't know to this day. Still don't know. Uh, the next it, one. Oh, it was sorry. one of. The, I would say it was one of the click. That's for sure. I've heard X Pac. I've heard. I've heard a couple guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny. Number one hoe in the world. <laughs> Biggest hoe in the world. Nastiest uh, hoe in the world. Ooh. Let me keep going. Yes. This piece of shit in the world. <laughs> you want me to keep going? Yes. You know, piece of shit. I'm not sad. <laughs> First time you uh, were told that you were going to be body donna zip. And um, I have actually heard you talk about once before how, like, you were really gutted to lose your, you know, you had to buzz your hair as well. Yeah, well, uh, that was when um, there was really nothing for us anymore. And, and uh, so Smoky Mountain was done and we were done. And so I said, Hey, uh, if there's anything I could do, I said, okay, we'll keep it in mind. They called me back and says, how would you feel about cutting hair, dyeing it blonde and, uh, be a body Donna? And I said, absolutely not. They said, oh, okay, click. Well, wait a minute. It's just hair. Um, it's better than, and I love Chris. Okay, I'll do it. All the while thinking I can get out of this. I can th- I can think of something to get out of this. I didn't. So at that time, it was a weird time for WWE because it was in a low period. WWE, I had no contacts in WCW that could help me get anywhere and go in there. It, this is a clickish business, no matter what you what you think, what you know. The click, there's always been a click. It's always been about that. And, you, and I was in no click. I just, I don't like that. I just wasn't my thing so when i heard about it i thought ah oh, damn no i don't want to do this but 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 i can make it work but i knew and really deep down inside and in my heart this ain't gonna work because it wasn't just chris we had another passenger on this trip and it was like oh my god man i knew her in smoky mountain and i had seen her at that time in wwe and she doesn't lack for confidence at all. And she didn't care what anybody thought about what she did or what she said. She was, she was the most downloaded celebrity on AOL by God. And I am a sex symbol and I want every picture. I'm on every cover. Yeah. Just wait, sweetheart. Cause it don't last forever. Hmm. Oh yeah, I will. No, I think it's been proven. So, you know, that's how I felt when I learned about it. I thought, well, I, it was a miserable time. It was, it was probably one of the most miserable times in the business. And I let it show too. Then when they told us we were going to change her with 
cloudy. I remember when Vince, Vince was when he told us personally, and Chris said, that's the stupidest fucking idea I've ever heard. <laughs> I didn't say a word when I should have. I should have because I knew it was stupid too, but I was just walk. I was walking on eggshells and for various reasons. And Chris knew, uh, Tammy knew, you know, they, they both knew the same thing. Tammy knew she was in, Chris knew he was out. Chris knew she was in and Tammy knew Chris was out. So she just took full advantage of it. And, so, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it was a terrible time. Not the best time to be, be me. I um, I actually spoke to Johnny Candido maybe a couple of months ago, and we, we he he did bring up Sonny, of course. Um, I must ask this: uh, uh, Johnny says that she was always a nightmare from a uh, day dot. Yeah. Um, yeah. In Smoky Mountain Wrestling, uh, before she was the 1996's most downloaded celebrity on AOL, was there any personality difference, or was she just always a nightmare to deal with? Always a nightmare to deal with. I, I, I look and I, <laughs> no, she's a bitch, but I don't mean that to be nasty. <sighs> what? No. Uh, here's, here's the thing. Um, she was always told her whole life, boy, you're sure cute. Boy, you're sure pretty. getting all the attention. And she dug it. She loved every minute of it, no doubt, as, as a young girl would she didn't handle it real well. And once she um, got that national global exposure, she was, I, I rode with Chris and Tammy one time to a town, one time in WWE together. From the time we, we met, we stopped. As she was getting out of the car, she was bitching and complaining and messing with Chris the whole way there, just being a nasty person. I got to the building. Um, I didn't know Taker real well at that time either, but it, Taker and the Godwins had drove to the town together. One more seat. So I went to uh, Taker and said, man, is there any way I can slide in the uh, car with you guys? Said, uh, yeah, sure. So I told Chris and Tammy, I'm going to give you guys privacy on the way home. Uh, I'm going to ride with these guys. Okay. So we get in the car and uh, all three of them, or Phineas, I think it was, who said, so what happened? I told him, I said, dude, I can't take it. I just can't take it. Two hours of nonstop bitch. I mean, the only time she stopped was to take a breath of air. That was it. So, yeah, she... Uh, unfortunately, it happens to, to a lot of people, but she she went off the rails, and I hate that for her because she could have been a very nice lady, but it's not her personality. No, that's life. Uh, one very quick thing on Tammy, and this is probably another no comment. When she got the slot drop from uh, the Godwins that time, and uh, I hear a few people contributed to the contents of the bucket, were you one of them? No comment. Oh, okay. So Tammy, I uh, love, loved working with her. I still talk to her to this day. I think we're do we're, we are doing WrestleCade together in November. Um, she's still a good friend. She was at my wedding um, and everybody warned me about her, how awful she was, but she wasn't. And she's been a, a friend of mine for over 20 years. And I, I love her. Tammy Sitch. Oh, Tammy Finch. Sonny. Sonny. You know what? Uh, I was uh, in New York about a month ago, and the, the guy that I'm doing the show for, we're driving. He says, "See this building over here?" And I looked at it; it's an old rock building with bar. He said, "Tammy Finch is in there. <laughs> she was in that prison there, but she just <laughs> got out. Did you know that? Yeah, uh, she's Gonna, been in and out quite a few times. I've heard. Yeah, yeah, but uh, they just got her out, and uh, and it's Smoky Mountain." Uh, I'm wrestling Ken, Tammy's old boyfriend. Candido. Chris, Chris Candido, yeah. Yeah, Chris Candido and, uh, and Brian Lee. Now, in in this match, she told, they told me that, like, I'm going to power drive her, but I don't. 
And at that time, Tammy was really a butthole in that business. And uh, so she comes to me right this year, because we're fixing to go to rent. She goes, whatever you do, I don't have no panties on. <laughs> right? You don't have no panties on. And you, what do you know? I, so I get in the ring. I go like I'm on power driver. When I do, I grab her dress and pull it over her head. <laughs> hey, she was cussing me. And I went to the back. I didn't see her. Right. And, and that's just back. I didn't see her. Then all of a sudden, here she comes around the corner. She pointed that face at me. She said, I was mad at you for pulling my dress up, she said, but I just sold $500 worth of Polaroids. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'd never even come close to that, you know. Uh, then she liked me. Uh, that's, <laughs> but it was funny as hell. I was laughing my ass off, too, because I pulled that dress right over top of her. You tell me you ain't got no panties on. <laughs> From, you know, 5,000 people. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Sonny tells a story once that um, she slapped you and uh, you went, Jesus Christ, what did you do that for? And um, then you had to uh, make her realize how to do a slap properly in uh, the professional wrestling world. Oh, yeah. I told her. I mean, I grabbed a ring and slapped me. I mean, she slapped the piss out of me. I told her, I said, you know, I said, different words in the ring. I'm going, Jesus Christ, don't you know how to work? God, just slap me, man. And that hard, yeah, that happened in Smoky Mountain. That, that's when they didn't know. You understand me. Mm. There are businesses that work. It's a lot of things you can do. You know, it, even slapping, you know, and, and if you're a great heel or re just raking eyes is a lot. You get more heat than any, but if you got to know what you're doing. Mm. At the time, Tammy was just starting in Smoky Mountain Rice, and she was, you know, greener than Al shit. Mm. <laughs> and beautiful. God, she was beautiful. Holy crap. And that was, this is way before she went to WWE, but she was beautiful, WL, but she was beautiful. Gosh. But boy, could she be a, a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that Tom Pritchard uh, was a bit, oh, you know, he liked Chris, but oh, Tammy, you know, didn't get on. And then, you know, he was sort of convinced to, you know, in public be, a, you know, a B as a three. And everything, but really, you know, he didn't really get on with Tammy that much. Uh, when did Tammy sort of get maybe a bit more difficult to deal with? Well, dude, from the beginning, she was fucking difficult to deal with. <laughs> like, it, so my brother met her his senior. There, it was both their senior years of high school, and before he met her, he already had a date to his senior prom. He was at his senior prom. And she drove to the senior prom and made this huge scene and made him leave his date at the prom. Like they, they could already tell she was high drama and she was like, dude, she was a fucking nightmare. Like when she had a couple of drinks in her, or even if she didn't, she's just one of those people that loved chaos, loved to create insanity. Just freaking, you know, if you read that professional wrestling story, you, you knew the kind of shit that I was seeing. It was fucking bonkers. You know, like I have so many, fucking crazy tammy stories but uh she yeah it, i'd say it got you know progressively worse and then when when she wasn't sunny the hot looking chick anymore she still thought she was which made her even more like intolerable because now she's like this freaking she's bitching yelling yeah she was just really tough to fucking deal with <laughs> she's not even good know? to look at anymore like that same yeah, right i mean not that I ever, I mean, I, I never looked at her like that. Obviously, she was like my sister-in-law. But it would be like, you know, when I, like years later, when I got older, it would be like, you know, all right, bro, love you. I'll, I'll see you later. All right, Tammy, later. And then he'd be like, dude, can you just say you love Tammy too when, when you leave? And I'd do it for like a week. And then she'd do something fucking completely bonkers. And then I'd, again, I'd be hating her. But then he convinced me to be nice to her again. And it was just the whole fucking... You know, if you want, if you want me to tell you some crazy Tammy stories later or now, I can. But uh, it, well, this actually might lead into a bit because I. So in English vernacular, I'd say quite a few stories. Bit depressing, of course. But Tammy started in the WWF, slagging her way around that locker room like nobody's business. Um, you know, like Sean, obviously, is the famous one. Davy Boy Pillman, apparently, like 
Yeah. And that may, and the fucked up thing is my brother, he didn't fucking want to believe it. Like when people are like, Oh, Chris must've been into it. It's like, dude, I, I saw him trying to fucking hang himself. Like he wasn't into it. Trust me. He fucking hated it. And when I, like, I, I was a lot more quicker to, like to knock a motherfucker out than Chris was. And he's like, you're going to, he's like, you're going to come across Shawn Michaels. Don't do nothing. Be cool to him. This is like later on in life when I'm like in my twenties, he's like, he's like, I, he's like, as far as I know, they're, like, they're just rumors, you know, had I known now, cause all right, I'll, 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 I'll take you to this one. I'll, I'll, I'll tell a story that ties into that. Cause at the time I thought everything was just rumors. So, so this is when Chris was alive. We're so me and him, we kind of get like Tammy's out of the business and me and him, we get like booked as like a package deal. And, uh, you know, we'd go all over together, have the fucking greatest time. And like during the week or whatever, we'd like play down our bookings. We'd be like, Oh, we got to go to Boston. It's going to be the shits. Yeah. You don't want to come. But sometimes she would get like a fucking child and like lock herself in my car. So anyway, she she gets herself on this trip to Boston with us. And uh, so after the show, like behind, like backstage, there's like a bar and shit for like the boys. And we're all sitting around tables like me, my brother, balls. Um, I forget who else was there. A couple other guys, like they'd bring in a couple more guys, like guys I'd see there would be like Billy Gunn, Raven, Brian Christopher. I don't remember the exact match of guys that night, but Tammy's at the bar. And all of a sudden she hauls off and fucking slaps this dude at the bar. I'm the closest one to him, to the bar. So I grab the dude and drag him outside to put the boots to him. A couple of the guys follow me. And he's like, dude, I swear to God, it did nothing. She just slapped me out of nowhere. Then Chris is going, time to go, time to go. Tammy's puking in a fucking garbage can. And people are taking pictures on their phone. So she passes out. We pick her up. We throw her in the back of the car, close the door. You know, whatever. That's par for the course. But I'm driving. I'm 19. 20 something like that uh i've been drinking i took a couple gimmicks uh, it's starting to rain and he's like dude this is before he got like clean he's like oh, i wish we had more somas like we have like zero somas i'm like fuck somas i'm like let's just smoke a joint and be fine for some reason tammy's fine with every other drug in the book but hates pot hates it so out of her fucking stupor she wakes up she goes smoke pot you two motherfuckers and she just started attacking us from the back seat kicking us in the head fucking punching the two of us i'm in boston i'm fucking half drunk driving in the fucking pouring rain he goes back to try to like make her stop hitting us and she fucking bites him on the face i fucking take the next exit off i park the car i'm like dude handle this please i go walking away next thing i know i see a car a cop car pulling up to my car so i go running back to the cop car she jumps out of the back she goes i fucking she's like i woke up and these two were we're beating me. I go, what? You crazy bitch. And she fucking swings at me right in front of the cop. <laughs> Cops like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to take everybody in. I'm like, listen, I'm like, the hotel is like right there. I'm like, let me just take, take them to the hotel. And, and you know, you won't see us ever again. Cops like, all right, go to the hotel. So I'm taking them to the hotel. And Chris is like, Tammy, what's wrong? Bam. She punches him. He's like, babe, what's wrong? Bam. She punches him. We get into the hotel room. He, he's like, babe, what's wrong? Bam. Punches him. He puts her on the bed. And he's like, babe, she reels back and kicks him right in the fucking face. I couldn't watch this anymore. I grabbed him and I dragged him out of the fucking room. I threw him into the hallway, shut the door behind us. He's fighting to get back in. I'm fighting him to not let him in. We kind of come to a stalemate. I'm just like, dude, let's get in the car and fucking leave her. Fuck this shit. Like, fuck her. Like, let's let's go. Let's go right now. And he's like, dude, I, he's like, I can't. I'm like, why? Why? You know? And he's like, I brought her into this business. I feel like I have to take care of her. I'm like, fuck that. Like, this is our chance. Like, let's get the fuck out of here. And had I known all that shit that she really did cheat on him with every fucking swinging dick there was, I could use that as fucking ammo. But he was always like, dude, it's just rumors. It's just rumors. So, you know, I think if he really knew the scale of her, of him cheating on her, if I had had that, I would fuck, uh, uh, you know, I would have so much more ammunition to go after him with mm. together to, what, to just a PowerPoint. You know? the, these are the reasons you should leave. Yeah. Right. I mean, my, like, she, you know, she gets drunk, causes scenes. That's a fucking pain. You know, oh, we always have like hot, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that shit at my parents' house. And he'd be like, don't get all fucked up before we go. Of course I pick him up to come over here and boom, she'd be all gimmicked up in the car. 
We'd be at 7-Eleven trying to give a Red Bull and shit. My mom's calling. Where are you guys? Dinner's done. It's just, it was just a nightmare. Like every fucking holiday. Ugh. Yeah. Just, just, and like, uh, somebody, uh, uh, Mike Johnson from PWI was like, are you surprised at all by, by Tammy and all her arrests? I'm like, no, I'm like, not at all. I'm like, because I'm like me and my brother, we would never call the police. We would just, I'm like, it wasn't the best coping mechanism. We would just forget that it happened the next day and wake up like everything was fine, you know, and just not talk about it. Whereas regular people would just call the cops and they see somebody drunk attacking people, you know, where me and him would just go on with our lives, you know. But I, I guess there's something to be said that he really fucking loved her and he, you know, they met when they were 17. But had I, like I said, had I known all that shit, I would have fucking had so much more ammo to go after him with, you know. Yeah, break, but, something to break the hypnosis, you know, the, the spell. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Be like, look what's happening, dickhead. I know you go to was it? It's WWE, but it's WWE CW, and it's Balls Mahoney who, uh, when he's in there, recommends you to come in, and you end up doing quite a few. Uh, uh, it wasn't all jobs, was it? Or, or was it all losing on losing? Yeah, dark was match. it all to, was it all to balls or? Yeah, yeah. Well, I did a tag match with me and Damien Adams versus Balls and Axel, and uh, after that, Axel, due to his problems or whatever he was going through at the time didn't wasn't going to work there and balls was like dude like i was saying he was like dude me and you fucking we could tag we, we tagged on the indies together for a bunch of different places he's like let's fucking do this shit i mean axel was a lot better worker than me but physically i could do more and i was younger and it did make sense but on the other hand my family you know i was lying to them i was telling them i, was, I wasn't wrestling so if I like all of a sudden popped up on TV, like, you know, like what the fuck? So it was like, I, it was, it was really tough. Like what to do at that time. Mm. So. I believe, uh, is this the time when you actually meet Shawn Michaels as well? Face to face. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, I was, uh, I was, oh yeah, I was sitting down. I, it was either before or after a match. And I was talking to Jericho. who's was like, like, you know, he was like standing in a doorway I'm sitting down, like, like taking my pads and shit off. And Shawn Michaels sits next to me. We give each other a little, like, wrestling handshake. And Jericho's like, it's Candido's brother. And he's like, he's like, hey, bro. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? And he's just like, he's like, your brother was such a really, a really great talent. You know, he's like, sometimes in this business, you, you, you have to be out for yourself and be selfish. I'm like, all right, thanks for that, you know. <laughs> I, I, got, that's, I wish I had more exciting story. That's what he said, you know. No, but, did, it, did it sort of like think you know all those years of god if i find him face to face and then when it actually happens you you don't i, I don't well, know if you like freeze or you sort of just think mm, no well worth it. this was this was like before it was before a match a if i would have fucking just started kicking the shit out of him everybody would have just kicked the shit out of me i mean i had some allies but i would have got my ass kicked i don't care about that part but then balls wouldn't have had his match with an axel wouldn't have and i would have fucked shit up for them Hmm. And I, I mean, at, at the time I was more, it was right when I walked into the building and said my hellos and was sitting down is when Sean Michael sat next to me. So if I had started shit then, we were the very first match on. So if I had started shit then, I it would have felt good to me to fucking get some fucking, to like knock him out or whatever. But then it would have fucked everything up for everybody else. So at the time, my head was more focused on the match at hand. And my brother telling me, my brother died in 05 that, that this was in either late 05 or early 06 so it, my brother would tell me when you see him don't do nothing just be cool so i just did what he told me to do you know tammy sitch tammy's uh i just saw her along with uh with missy hyatt she was the following month uh came in aiw in cleveland and she looked great she's uh, aged well she put on a couple pounds, but she's still beautiful and still witty and charming, and uh, people like her. Mm. I like Tammy. She was, I thought she was one of the most beautiful girls in the business at yeah. one time because she was so good on the mic. In w, when she was in WWF and grabbed that mic and that good-looking bro to be doing those promos, man, I thought she was hot, and she was. Yeah, definitely. Still hot. Uh, I got a naked picture of her. I'll send you her and Missy Hyatt are posing naked. I'll send you that. <laughs> I've uh, I, I've seen a clip of the DVD. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, a brief clip that turned it off quite soon afterwards. Yeah, they were in all that. Good for them, you know. <laughs> Good for, hey, if they made the money, I'd that's, marry, that's I'd choice. marry her. I'd marry her for a weekend. <laughs> I thought you had the uh, tall, blonde Hungarian at home. Well, she went to work, but I'm just saying that. <laughs> I have to ask you this because, and not only because it seems that uh, two of the top three videos on my YouTube channel uh, feature Tammy Sitch, uh, but it, memories of Tammy Sitch. I actually asked Dr. Tom and I said, was she always a nightmare or only when she got to the <laughs> WWF? And he's like, always, always a nightmare. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I tell people I knew Tammy before tits and with tits. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, when I met her, man, she's this little young 21 year old girl. Um, I saw certain things and you, uh, you, you gotta be quiet about, and I'm like, yeah, you kind of know something's going on, but, um, I didn't personally have any problems with her because I didn't, um, didn't interact with her a whole lot. Uh, a couple of times when I was doing the kendo thing, I'd be in a locker room in the hillside and, you know, so I'd, you know, be around her there. Um, I had went through a home and or the apartment and eating dinner a couple of times with them. Um, you know, she, uh, she wasn't a problem for me because I, sometimes I think you teach people how to treat you and I never let her treat me in a disrespectful way. I was a little bit older and, um, uh, I try to be, I try to be professional to her in, in a manner that, you know, um, I respect for Chris, this is where the line's drawn, you know? So, um, now I know a lot of other things about her and, but, it, you know, just like in my first book there, um, if I, I didn't go in there and, and write and shit on people, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be the one, um, to shit on her and, and, um, uh, uh kind of if i knew someone's doing drugs well that's their fucking issue that's their problem i'm not gonna be one talking trash about it or writing about it same thing with affairs if i knew guys were fucking around or what it's not my place to go and tell the wives or nothing like that you know i'm not I'm not gonna snitch them out or stooge them out so I, certain things i saw about her and knew about her were you know that's their deal not mine mm -hmm. uh, i'm not gonna be the one to fuck it up so is, yeah. is there something at least slightly admirable? Is uh, I'll, I know Jim Cornette used saltier terms, but I'll 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 uh, I'll cool it down slightly. It's like is it admirable at the very least that she's a bitch and she knows it and she admits it and she's upfront with it rather than somebody who's just sort of oh keeps yeah, it on absolutely. the down low. No. no, that's the whole thing. I when you, I saw you know I think you teach people how to you know uh, treat you. No, she knows she's a bitch. That's <laughs> that's a gimme. That's a gimme. Me, you know, uh, you don't have to be a bitch to me, but I see it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, um, no, she, she, um, um, it's one of those things, you know, like I'm better than you, my shit don't stink, I don't, my bitch, um, this is the way I am, but see, I'd rather someone be that way with me, I know where I stand with that person, mm. so knowing that, it's like, okay, I already know how she is, um, but she's not going to treat me that way. Cause I'm not going to treat her a certain way and we're going to keep her professional. And that's just the way it, it was at that time, you know? Um, and, and I know she's had her problems over the years and things, and, and we all have our demons and, uh, battles and stuff that go on. But, um, man, uh, she had the fucking world out there, man. I mean, most downloaded and top the world making all, most downloaded on AL, OLL, whatever, mm. uh, and being on TV every week and, you know, had it all, but man, um, yeah, beautiful girl, um, ugly heart. Uh, Tammy Sitch. Tommy Search. Sonny. Who's that? The blonde ah. girl, Chris Candido's girlfriend. Yes, 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 yes. Well, she was into her business, of course, uh, <laughs> but I, I never, I never have nothing against her. Uh, good people too. You know, I, I that I remember, I never have problem with nobody. I just I went there to do my my business, and mm -hmm. she was a good girl. She was a, a young talent uh, that arrived at the company and, and did what he had to do for for survive. But good person, Tammy Sitch or Fitch, you prefer? <sighs> Man, that's a tough one. Um, I met Tammy when she was nineteen years old, and she wasn't the super bitch yet. She could be, but she wasn't. And you know, she didn't drink, she didn't smoke, she was an excited kid. She'd been a wrestling fan her whole life. Um, 
I know she was screwing around on Chris even then. I'm not going to hold. It's 30 years. I'll tell what I want to tell. Right before they came, they'd been in Memphis. And the rumor out of Memphis was Eddie Gilbert used to book Candido on these long road trips. So Tammy wouldn't go. And then, meanwhile, Tammy stayed home with Eddie and Eddie's fucking Tammy. I do know that Rex King was also staying with us and with Candido. And he came back one day, just freaked out, just freaked out. I'm like, what happened? He's like, Chris is in the shower. Tammy pulled my stuff down and started blowing me. I'm like, whoa. So anybody who she thought could get her to WWE, she was nice to, extra nice. She didn't turn into the super bitch. I, I remember the day her dad passed away, and then all of a sudden she started. I think the loss of her dad in her life really put her in a down spiral. Yeah. And then she's become the train wreck that she is. But uh, super talented as well. I mean, for all her faults, she was she seemed to get it straight away. She she was a natural, and and you know she was a natural. Yeah, she really knew how to get heat. She was a heat seeker. Okay, she knew it. Great Carly, Chris Candido. It seems so weird to think that those two actually had a match, and it was a good match involving Carly. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I I remember that. I remember that trip because I I had, to, I had to babysit Tammy. He's just like, dude, he was because he'd go away for like, like, you know, the, like maybe om- like not almost a month. He'd be there, like, like you go for like three weeks. He'd be like, dude, just take care of Tammy. Make sure, you know, take her out, you know, take her to <laughs> take her to sushi or whatever. So like, it sounds money. like you're walking her like a dog once a day. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's just like, dude, just make sure she doesn't fucking get arrested. So I'm like, all right. So I, yeah, uh, I. I, I, I definitely remember that trip, but I remember him coming back and, and, you know, tell me about this dude, you know, how he, uh, how, you know, how, how he had to do a lot extra to get the guy over, but it ended up being a great match, you know? And um, my brother loved doing shit like that, working guys and bumping for them and making their stuff look good. So yeah, he enjoyed working with great Kali. Yeah, I just find that so weird. Uh, this was before he had like apparently a botched knee operation, so he can actually move a tiny bit as well at this point. Uh, Carly could. Uh, you said it was a very memorable trip. Was that just because you had to look after Tammy all that time? Yeah, well, yeah, well, because all right, I'll tell you the, the quick story then. So, in two thousand two, I'm twenty, and uh, you know when you're twenty, you're an idiot. And it was like midnight. Me and my friends were having a party, and we ran out of beer. We're like, who's 21? That is close that we can get him to get beer for us. So we're like, I'm like, yeah, I'll get Tammy to get us beer. So I get Tammy, you know, the only place open is a bar that sells packaged goods because liquor stores close at 11 or whatever. So I'm like, here, Tammy, here's 40, 50 bucks, whatever, go in and, and get us a 30 pack, whatever. So I'm in the car waiting, 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 waiting. And, um, finally i go in she's at the bar drinking right i'm like oh geez i'm like let's get our beer and let's go so she gets up she walks over to where these these dudes shoot and pool and they have like money on the table and she takes the balls and smacks them all over the place right so the guy is shooting pool are like i'm like yo you fucking cunt. i'm like don't fucking talk to her like that bitch so now i'm getting into it with these guys right so my friend sue who happened to be at the bar because she was dating one of the guys who was playing pool was trying to calm everything down and was like, was like, hey, Tammy, I, you know, I, you're, you have a beautiful house. You have a beautiful house. Um, and she's like, you've been to my house. And turns around, bam, and starts attacking me. I'm like, fuck. So I'm fending her off, fending her off. I, uh, you know, bouncers are like, time to go. Um, so I'm carrying her out as I'm getting my ass kicked by her, holding her, getting hit in the head. So I put her in the front seat of my car. I'm driving, fending her off with one arm, driving with the next. Bring her back home. We get back home. She sits down. And this is the fucked up part. She sits down and, you know, whatever. She's like, I feel bad what I just did. Can I give you a hug? I'm like, sure, I'll take a hug. So I go to give her a hug. I'm not looking. She goes, well, bam. She palm strikes me right in the fucking nose. She's like, palm strike. Al Snow told me that. Dude, it hurt so bad. I ran over to the door and just went. Bah, 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 bah. I just like hit the door with like six punches and like freaking ripped it in half. I was so pissed because like, you know getting hit directly when you're not expecting it, getting fucking hit in the nose. Ugh. So that's why I remember that trip. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever get the change back from what Tommy didn't spend? Oh, of course not. No, of course not. I, you know. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> 